when we go to Desmos.com, uh, uh, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using tools from the graphing calculator. Uh, this is different than the one we've used previously. We've been using the scientific calculator. If you've been using your phone app or your phone uh, to use the Desmos scientific calculator application, that's fabulous. However, you will need to download the graphing calculator uh, application from either Android or Apple Store to be able to do the things that we're going to be doing today. The interface for the phone app and this is the same and let's give this a try. Uh, what we want to do in, in here today is we want to be able to figure out statistics for a given data set. The first thing that you're going to need to do before we start is you need to actually open that data set. So if we click down um, in the bottom corner here, and I'm just going to do some typing here. You can directly type in on the um, on the web version, or you can use the keyboard down here, which I'll do just so you can see how it would work with your phone. The first thing I want to do is define what my data set's going to be. I like to call it capital A. Once you've defined your data set, we're going to go ahead and type equals. And then what we want to do is we want to use those square brackets. The square brackets can be found under ABC right down here on that in the middle of that bottom row. That's going to open the square brackets here. And notice now it says A is equal to a zero element list. I want to enter all of the data points for the values that I want to calculate. Okay, so uh, what the data that I'm going to put in here are the number of women CEOs in Fortune 500 companies from the year 2014 to 2023. So in 2014, there were 24 uh, women CEOs. So we can type 24 in and then use a comma to separate each of our different data points. In 2015, there were also 24 and then a comma. In 2016, uh, there were 21, and then 32, 24, so it went down that year, and then up to 33, 37, 41, 44, And 52. Once you've entered those all in, notice it says that there's a 10 element list. I'm going to go ahead and push enter, or you can hit the return button down here. Now, anytime that I refer to capital A, it's going to be pulling these 10 data numbers to be able to do the things that I need it to do. So, what are some of the different calculations that we have covered so far? Well, one of the first ones that we covered is the um, is the mean or average. We can find our function values here under the keyboard. And remember, that was the keyboard pull up from down here. Here are all the different functions that you can use. If we wanted to find the mean, that's our usual average value. We can put mean. It's going to open the parentheses here. And then we can put our capital A in. and hit enter. So here it found the mean of all of these numbers was 33.2. So that was the average over the past 10 years of how many women CEOs were in top 500 companies. Not a whole lot out of 500. Another piece of information that we found uh, a lot was the standard deviation. We can again find the standard deviation under those functions, that functions button. Scrolling down to statistics, our standard deviation is STDEV. We want to use this one, not the one with P. We want to use the DEV one. And again, we can find the standard deviation here. So this gives us a, a spread, a general idea. If we go 10.3 above or below the mean, we will get a good idea of where the majority of the data points in this grouping is, are going to lie. Uh, other pieces of information that we have found before, we found the median, 
that was in our list here. So if we scroll down, we can find the median of our data set A. Or we could find Let's say we want to find the quartile. We can type on quartile. If this time it's going to be looking for two pieces of information. We're going to put in data set A, but then we need to put in a comma and say which quartile we're interested in. So if I want to know the first quartile, so where the first 25% of the data is blocked out, it's going to happen at 24. If I want to find the third quartile of data, I can again go in through functions, or if you have a keyboard on your on your computer, you can just type in quartile as soon as you've got it, the, the entire expression there, it's waiting. You can do parentheses a comma three. And you can do that also through our functions and typing down below. In this case, I'm going to get a quartile of three here for this one. So this just gives us some opportunities of different calculations that we can use um, as we're going through to do things. Now, the five number summary is made up of the median, the first and third quartiles, and the smallest and biggest numbers in our data set lists. If you go back to functions again and scroll through statistics, we can find the maximum and min minimum here by using these tools. Or, this is such a popular, that five number summary is so important and so popularly used that it has its own button. If you just hit this stats button, and then put in our data set. We were doing data set A here. Um, we can hit enter and notice that it's going to find all five of those pieces of information at once. So we can find the mean, uh, the minimum Q1, the median Q3, and the maximum here just by pulling this data up. Now suppose that we wanted to find the interquartile range. If um, we go back to our functions, this is not one of our options here. Uh, to find the interquartile range, or IQR. So you're going to have to remember for that one, you'll have to remember the definition of our interquartile range, which is just the third quartile minus the first quartile. And you can just do that calculation here. Uh, 41 minus 24 will give me 17, and this would be our interquartile range. Similarly, we can find the range by taking the maximum value minus the minimum value. In this case, 52 minus 21. There's a range of 31, but an interquartile range of 17. So these, um, the IQR and the range are values that you'll have to do a little extra calculation for. Otherwise, standard deviation mean and then that five quarter, five number summary can be found under stats right here, all under our different functions. Um, moving forward. So this gets us all of our numerical summary information data that we've been interested in looking for uh, just by using these tools under functions and scrolling down till we see statistics. Again, make sure first thing you've got to do is label that list. You do not need to label, put the list in any numerical order. Notice I have 24s and then drop to 21s. You can enter the list exactly the way you see it. It is important if the same number shows up more than once that you include that number more than once in your list. This number down here where it says a 10 element list says that I have put 10 data points in. And so you can use that information to verify and make sure that you've put in all of the data points that you are interested in using. So kind of a basics there for the Desmos, again, graphing calculator app. You can get it to it directly by doing uh, www.desmos.com slash calculator, or you can uh, find that separate graphing calculator app for your phone.